Go ahead and call this meeting of the Pittsburgh City Commission to order. <coughs> Will you join me in the flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All righty, we'll go ahead and open up the meeting to public input. If there's anybody here this evening that wishes to speak about anything, please come forward and give your name. <coughs> and... First time, where do I go? Oh, sorry. Right there at the yeah, podium. Right there, and, just, and stay near the box because that speaker will pick you up. If you... My name is Matt O'Malley. I'm the director of the Lord's Diner in Pittsburgh. Uh, first of all, thank you to all of you who have supported the Lord's Diners Pittsburgh ministry. We've been open just over two months, and we've served 8,750 meals. Uh, we have always felt that the city has really embraced our mission, and that goes a long ways. Uh, having said that, we serve many of the residents of the Best Hotel on a nightly basis. Over time, these guests of ours have begun, begun to trust in us uh, with all of their unique situations and have really opened up and spoken to staff many times about their living arrangements. It has become clear to me that there are obviously critical management issues at this site. Granted, most housing sites do have issues, uh, but my concerns with this multiply when this housing site serves such a vulnerable population. It has been brought to my attention that residents feel that they are living in a constant atmosphere of drug traffic and unsafe living conditions. Many residents of the best struggle with mental setbacks and live on very low fixed incomes. Some feel as if they are even being preyed upon by intimidating drug dealers who know when their disability and social security checks come in. Thus, they can't really seem to escape their own drug and addiction issues. On top of being able to get, and I quote, any drug you want at the best. These community members have said that they are also dealing with poor living conditions including leaks, mold, and feces left by pets and squatters in many parts of the building, which have led to offensive odors and unsanitary conditions throughout the building. Some of the happiest moments of our guests who live at the best, uh, when they talk about where they live, some of their happiest moments is when they tell me or my staff that they have found another place to live and they are finally out of that place. Uh, you should almost, you should see the joy on their face when they say, I don't have to live there anymore. I don't have to be in that place anymore. These problems would not exist, in my opinion, if there was a management presence at this site. According to these people, our guests, our community members who have confided in us, uh, there is rarely any presence of housing management on site, so residents are really left to do whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it, wherever they want to do it. Um, I would ask that the city of Pittsburgh please do something about this historical building in our town with the investments made at the Lord's Diner site, um, across the street at the Frisco Depot Event Center, and with Block 22 in full swing. Uh, this center of our city has as much excitement going on now as any point in my life. If these issues at the best are dealt with, I believe that there is nothing stopping the entire Block 22 area into catapulting Pittsburgh into a bright and exciting future. Thank you for your time and for your part in making my hometown, Pittsburgh, a place, place where I'm very proud to live. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Okay. Go ahead, Larry. Thank you. My name is Larry Fields. I live at uh, 1704 North Locust here in Pittsburgh. I was gone a long, long time and uh, came back to Pittsburgh on purpose, uh, which may or may not speak highly of me. I, uh, I support Matt O'Malley and the Lord's Diner, what he has to say. Matt is thinking and speaking uh, about the concerns of the people. I would like to speak about the concerns of financial. Not that I don't care about the people, but my wife and I, as uh, some of you know, purchased the old Frisco Depot and passenger station and depot. And for us, it's a rather large investment, you know, we're for a mom and pop. The building sat empty 40 years, and uh, for us, we're spending a lot of money uh, restoring an old 100-year-old building. Uh, with Block 22, as, as Matt mentioned, uh, schools uh, bond approved at 30 million. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things going on. What I see with the Hotel Bess is the, it, it looks like a fort, a fortress of some kind. The entire first floor is closed. They got the window blinds pulled all the way down. 
and I see that every day. I've been working on the Frisco building for about a year. And so my, and I, and I look at that every day, it's kind of guerrilla marketing. I look at that, I don't have a focus group or anybody that studied it and see what's going on. But I talk to some of those people. They come over, visit, and I've got to talk to several of them that come by. But the blinds are pulled, and I, I know the windows haven't been washed probably since the Clinton administration. You can't see in the building. I know they can't see out. The, you know, the, the people will sit on the sidewalk there with nothing, not much to do. But those are tax dollars. And I see the fire department goes once, twice, maybe sometimes three times a week. And that's my tax dollars and your tax dollars. And we're, you know, the citizens are being undervalued and we're being overtaxed for something that we don't get to use. Now, if you had something on that ground floor, if that's possible to do during uh, maybe renegotiations of that place, maybe a business could go in there. Because if I wanted to go in that building today, I can't go in. You can't go in. You know, you have to have a pass key or some way to get in there. Uh, you know, you have to have the code. So the building is, is totally useless to a taxpayer. Now, yes, it provides services for some people. Some may uh, be underserved, some may be overserved. I don't you know, over medicated at least at some, some time. But those are tax dollars, they're my tax dollars, they're your tax dollars as well. But we don't get to utilize it. And if you have the fire department there a couple days a week uh, because someone pulled a fire alarm, and that happens uh, fairly often, uh, that's what the people tell me. They got a guy there, they have nicknames. Einstein likes to pull the fire alarm, he likes the bells. So the fire department comes. And their protocol must require that they look at every floor because they may be there an hour, maybe sometimes an hour and a half, two hours. And since I'm across the street, I'm nosy and I watch all of that action, see. And so they're there quite a while. Well, those assets are being utilized and being paid for by the taxpayers. And it happens too often. And you, they can't just ignore it. They can't just push the button and reset that fire alarm. They have to spend the time and do the right protocol to check it and make sure it's safe. So my concern, again, is financial. And it's easy to say, well, Fields just cares because it's going to affect me. And yes, that's true, it does affect me, or it stands to affect me. If you bring 105 or so college students downtown and other things, there's great things going on downtown. And, and I think we all are thrilled to see it. We want our business to do well. You know, we, ours isn't tax dollars. Our, you know, we're spending, a, as I said, a fair amount of money rebuilding this thing, and which we're getting very close to opening. Uh, and we want it to do well, and we want to be a part of the downtown area. We're here because we want to be. I would like to see something improve with the hotel desk. And it's management, it's not the building. The building itself is great. And the management uh, people that own it, they're in Columbia or Kansas City or Kokomo or Mars, I don't know. Uh, the people that are there supposed to be managing are in Coffeyville and they're only here two or three days a week. And what little I know about property management, you can't take a building like that and be around two or three days a week and actually maintain it, it and even operate it. So the people are there a lot by themselves, uh, which in itself is a, not a good situation. Uh, so if the city can do something, council can do something, direct staff, because staff would probably like to do something with it. And as Block 22 comes along, there's going to be more need to see that building improve. I look at the parking lot there every day. I think they have a nice big part of the parking lot. And I know you hear about parking. Everybody thinks there's not enough parking downtown where this comes. I'm, I'm sure you hear it a lot. There may or may not be. I don't, I'm not addressing the parking. Except in the Hotel Bass, there's usually nine cars there. One of them's been on blocks since October. I know they're not driving it around. Uh, and one's had the hood up for off and on. They must be overhauling it up. And so I see that every day, because I'm there every day. That's the reason I'm, I see that thing. So if things can be done, it would be wonderful if you could. Because it'll be a hardship on Block 22. It'll be a hardship on anything else downtown if, if it's not improved. I thank you for your time, and if uh, I can help in any way, I'd be glad to. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I, I would like to say, though, I know staff is working on the issues there as far as when and exactly and what's going to happen. We don't know yet, but they are working on the problems. Thank you. And I, and I agree. I think, I think they are. I see them, and I know they're concerned about it as well. But, uh, I think the Constitution gives us the right to complain, and I guess maybe sure. my wife told me not to come and complain. She told me to say I was concerned, so I'm <laughs> concerned, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Is there anybody else under public input this evening? Yeah, Joe. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Joe Dela Sega, 2106 Countryside Drive. Um, I'm here to, to uh, talk a little bit about the same things that, that Matt and Larry are concerned about. And, uh, what I realize is uh, my comments are not very original. They're going to they're gonna be a little bit of what you heard from both of them. But first of all, I, I too want to thank you as the council members and for 
Darren and, and the staff for the work that, uh, that you, the support that you've given to the diner. You know, when you're feeding 140 people a night with over 1,000 volunteers and uh, the people that have given the, the resources to even make that facility possible, it just reinforces the kind of community that we have here in Pittsburgh. So we appreciate you all very much. To follow up on uh, Matt and Larry's comments, I wanted to use the word investment. The investment on 4th Street from Broadway to Pine. The diner took Parrots Bay and the Lord's Diner and totally renovated it, renovated it at, at an extensive cost of only private uh, dollars, except for what, uh, what the city was able to do for us. Uh, look at Larry's investment in the event center and the fact that new business was created in that area. I think of Steve Ward and his family that run a first-class funeral home for years and years and not only invested their own money, but their, the uh, sweat equity that they personally invested. It's just overwhelming. And lastly, uh, with what you've been able to accomplish with Block 22, uh, it's so exciting. I think that uh, I, I agree with, with both these guys when they talk about the, uh, the renaissance that our city's going through. And it would be a shame not to take on the hotel best as soon as possible. Um, all of these investments have on-site managers that ensure things run well. You can't run an operation without good management. And in the future, Block 22 is going to have equally outstanding management. I'm not there at Fifth and Pine daily, but I continue to hear the stories and the complaints about the management of the hotel best, and it's obviously there's a problem. So I would echo Larry and Matt's concerns, and I would just ask that as a city staff and as you as city commissioners to make the cleanup of the hotel best, uh, which is the classic icon of our downtown, a high priority. The current uh, absentee owners must begin to understand the negative impact that lackluster management has on the tenants, the neighbors in the area, and the entire community. We can do better. Thanks for considering our requests, and then please step up efforts to improve this situation. Thank you again. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. Let's go ahead and close public input and move on to the consent agenda then. Are there any items to be removed this evening? None to have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Gray? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ketterman? Aye. Munsell? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Okay, consider the following. Property and liability insurance renewal. Consider approval of the city's property and liability insurance policy with EMC Insurance Company for the period of April 1st, 2017 to April 1st, 2018. Jamie? Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, the city's uh, insurance policy runs from uh, April 1st to April 1st each year, and this is uh, uh, the renewal for the April 1st, 2017 through April 1st, 2018 time frame. Uh, Ray Ryan of Ryan Insurance is the city's agent for uh, property and liability insurance. Uh, we received quotes from EMC Insurance and a quote from uh, Travelers Insurance. Uh, EMC has been the city's provider since 2013. Uh, prior to 2013, we had Travelers Insurance. Uh, EMC's Premium's a little bit higher than Travelers, but I'm recommending we stay with EMC. Uh, travelers, uh, they, they raised their rates quite a bit on us previously after the Joplin tornado, and we were able to get into uh, EMCs, and they normally don't do uh, cities bigger than 17,500 population, but Ray was able to get us on the EMC plan, and. Uh, and their rates have been really stable for the last four years. And I'm afraid if we go back to Travelers, we might not be able to get back with EMC, and then we'd be stuck and going forward in the future. So that's why I'm requesting that, the way it, to go with EMC again. You're saying a little bit. How much is a little bit? Oh, uh, it's about $20,000. On a, on a what uh, price policy? Uh, the EMC uh, quote is 296000 or I'm sorry, it's 294,000. It was 296,000 last year, and uh, but EMC they that the company gives dividends every year, 
and we're estimate got an estimated dividend of about fifty one thousand this year. So the net policy would be like two hundred forty five thousand for this year versus two hundred thirty thousand for uh, travelers. So it's only travelers about doesn't 15. do dividends at all. Okay, so it's about fifteen thousand dollars all difference yeah. on that. You know, other discussion, I'll move to approve. I second it. Been moved and seconded to approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Jamie. You. Good job, Jamie. Thank you, Ray. Uh, any non agenda reports or requests? Nope. And uh, I have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Been moved and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs>